Did you know that Melania Trump is the only first lady to have been born in a communist country? Let's take a look back to see Melania's rapid transformation from globetrotting model to first lady of the United States. Melania Kanaus was born on April 26, 1970 in Slovenia, which was located in the former communist country of Yugoslavia at the time. As was typical for families growing up in communist societies, her parents both worked for state-owned companies. Her mom worked at a textile factory and was a budding fashion designer, while her father managed car dealerships, as per Bloomberg. Speaking with GQ, Melania opened up about her childhood and upbringing, telling the outlet, I loved my childhood. It was a beautiful childhood. It has been said that Melania was drawn to her future husband due to similarities between the former The Apprentice judge and her father. She does not deny the comparisons. Melania told GQ, They grew up in totally different environments, but they have the same values. They have the same tradition. She went on to explain that she herself is comparable to to her husband, as they share traditional values. With her cherubic appearance, Melania began modeling as a child. Her mom, to whom she bears a striking resemblance, had an eye for fashion, and it was her collection of fashion magazines that inspired Melania to pursue a modeling career, as per The New Yorker. At the age of 16, she caught the attention of photographer Stane Yerko. Yerko told Today, It was January 1987 when I went home just before the end of the fashion show. On the stairs of the festival hall, I I saw a girl that immediately caught my eye. There stood a tall, slender, and attractive long-haired girl with distinct eyes. This propelled her toward modeling success as an adult, where she posed for numerous reputable fashion brands. When GQ asked Melania whether she had undergone cosmetic procedures to enhance her chances at making it as a model, she replied staunchly in the negative, explaining that she has merely been blessed with the good genes of her mother. Melania told the outlet, A lot of people say I am using all the procedures for my face. I didn't do anything. I live a healthy life. I take care of my skin and my body. I'm against Botox. I'm against injections. I think it's damaging your face, damaging your nerves. It's all me. The erstwhile Melania Knauss had been modeling when Donald Trump was drawn to her alluring looks. However, she never reached the supermodel status of, say, icons such as Naomi Campbell or Claudia Schiffer. And by the late 90s, a woman in her mid-20s was inexplicably considered too old for the catwalk. Trump and the former Miss Knauss met through Paolo Zampoli, the founder of ID Models, during a fashion week party per Harper's Bazaar. In typical Donald Trump style, he attended the event with another woman, but set his eyes on the Slovenian beauty. What's more, he was actually still married to his second wife, Marla Maples, though they had separated a year earlier per the New York Times. Melania told Harper's Bazaar, He wanted my number, but he was with a date, so of course I didn't give it to him. I said, I am not giving you my number. You give me yours, and I will call you. I wanted to see what kind of number he would give me. If it was a business number, I'm not doing business with you. However, as she soon discovered, Trump had an entirely different business model on his mind. By 1999, Melania had been on her first date with Donald Trump to an A-list nightclub, and they began a relationship. Melania chatted to ABC News about her relationship with her future husband, but she was rather reluctant to discuss whether she would marry the billionaire real estate heir, appearing somewhat uncertain as to their future. When asked whether she would sign a prenuptial agreement, she smiled and replied, You know, everybody has different opinions. So, let's see what's happened. In an eerie moment of foreshadowing, Melania was also asked about potentially becoming the first lady. I would be very traditional, like Jackie Kennedy. The question was in reference to the fact that Donald had been toying with the idea of a presidential run at the time. The couple was also interviewed by Dan Rather in 1999 regarding Trump's presidential bid. When the host quizzed Melania on her relationship with the Donald, asking what's the worst thing about him, Melania replied, I don't have the worst thing. He's doing a good job, wow. New Millennium, New Melania. The model decided to celebrate the end of Y2K with a new home. Only a few individuals are fortunate enough to be granted a so-called Einstein visa. But in 2001, Trump was awarded one to work in the U.S. 
Questions remain as to how a model was bestowed something usually reserved for those with extraordinary talents. Immigration lawyer David Leopold asked the Washington Post, what did she submit? There are a lot of questions about how she procured entry into the United States. However Trump may have acquired the Einstein visa, there is no doubt that she loves her newfound home. Speaking with Tatler, she argued that she is proof that the American dream really exists. She suggested that her key life events were all leading up to her role as First Lady. Melania told the outlet, "...every step in my life had a different turning point. Growing up in Slovenia, living in both Milan and Paris at a young age, then moving to the United States and living in New York City in my 20s. All of that has led to my serving our great nation as First Lady. When it comes to fate, she was dealt the Trump card. By 2002, Melania Trump was appearing at ritzy galas with her billionaire boyfriend. These swanky events provided the perfect vehicle for Trump to showcase her sartorial passions. With an increasing public profile came a swag to the formerly reserved model, who now pouted at the camera as she posed with Don. Melania told Harper's Bazaar, "...of course I always loved fashion, and I was always the tallest one and the skinniest ones, so that helped." Melania has indeed always been fashion for and quick to embrace the latest trends. Lingerie as evening wear was all the rage in the early 2000s, so she can be seen wearing slinky silk dresses that showcased her statuesque figure during public appearances in 2002. Speaking with People, she further discussed her interest in couture, telling the mag that she inherited her passion for fashion from her mom. I always loved fashion. My mother was a fashion designer, so it was always in my blood. Also in 2002, Trump took part in an important post-9-11 photo shoot for New York Magazine, in which she posed with an actual New York firefighter, Daniel T. Keene. Keene said of the surreal experience, "...the person who was doing my hair and makeup, they said, "'Do you know who that is? I don't know any models. I really wasn't into the scene.'" And they said, "'That's Melania Knauss. That's Donald Trump's girlfriend.'" And I said, "'Oh, okay.'" 2005 was the year of the lady and the Trump. After Don finally popped the question, he made Melania his third wife. In true Trumpian style, the couple held a lavish wedding. And you better believe it was a tremendous, terrific ceremony. According to Vogue, who featured the new bride on the cover of their February 2005 issue, the lucky lady wore a resplendent Christian Dior gown embroidered with 1,500 crystal rhinestones and pearls. The wedding itself reportedly cost $1 million, though there are rumors that the true figure could far exceed that amount. Meanwhile, Melania's diamond engagement ring cost $1.5 million, according to the New York Times. However, the publication notes that the apprentice judge only paid half that amount, despite his flourishing bank balance. Trump explained, "...only a fool would say, no thank you, I want to pay a million dollars more for a diamond." The star-studded guest list even included Donald Trump's future arch-nemesis Hillary Clinton, per The Hollywood Reporter. Few photos from the wedding day are public, but at the time, Melania Trump exhibited a healthy glowing tan and had dyed her hair a light honey brown, which she frequently wore in beach waves as reflective of the yachts. Despite marrying a billionaire, Trump says her life is pretty normal. Melania told Parenting, "...my life is very normal, for me. Maybe for some people they would not think that, but for me, it is." Prior to marrying Melania Trump, the Donald already had a large brood, but he was set on adding another Don Jr. to his name. In 2006, Melania gave birth to her first child, Baron. Donald Trump told People, "...Melania loves taking care of the baby. If we have more, it will be terrific." However, Baron remains the only child of the couple. Like many of the Trump kids, Baron shares an incredible likeness to his father. Melania gushed to the Palm Beach Daily News, "...he reminds me of Donald and a little bit of my dad. The baby looks like Donald. He has my eyes and beautiful brown hair. He has long fingers and long legs. The new mom spoke of her joy at becoming a parent for the first time, telling the newspaper, "...you can watch the baby, every move he makes. It's just amazing. A great, great experience. I was very lucky. I had a beautiful pregnancy. Everyone is healthy and happy." Melania Trump shares a close bond with Barron, who appeared to be a little budding savant. As Trump explained to People, she frequently communicates with her son in Slovenian. Melania said in 2009, 
He talks three languages. He speaks my language, Slovenian, English, and French. In 2010, Melania Trump appeared at various fashion events, showcasing her timeless and ever-evolving style. Notably, she appeared in a subtle black ensemble at New York Fashion Week, while her husband wore his signature oversized red tie. To mark the new decade, Trump launched a line of jewelry for QVC, which admittedly doesn't sound like a platform befitting the wife of a billionaire. When Donald Trump became president, the official White House website even mentioned Melania's jewelry line in its biography of the First Lady. The bio stated, Melania is also a successful entrepreneur. In April 2010, Melania Trump launched her own jewelry collection. As the Washington Post notes, it's highly unusual for the White House site to mention the entrepreneurial pursuits of the First Lady, so we suspect that Don may have had a hand in promoting his wife Bigley. However, QVC clarified that, while they did previously sell Melania's jewelry, QVC does not have an active relationship with the brand. No one wants to be shaded by QVC, but the television shopping network's loss is Melania's gain, as her brand continues to bring in a modest profit. According to Express, Melania's businesses made between $15,000 and $50,000 in 2016. Clearly, there is someone somewhere out there living their best life in Melania's QVC jewels. Many laughed when Donald Trump announced that he was running for the presidency in 2015. Yet in 2016, he was declared the reigning Republican nominee in the presidential election, beating the likes of arch-rival Ted Cruz. You of are the and I'll, and I'll tell biggest you. liar. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. By this point, there was an increasingly conservative shift in Melania's appearance. During campaign rallies, she sported elegant neutral-toned attire and subtle waves, complete with soft blonde highlights. This would prove to be a difficult year for Mrs. Trump, not least because of the sexual misconduct allegations levied against her husband. In a damning turn of events, Donald Trump was caught on tape making excruciatingly crude remarks about the supposed power he wields over women. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Following through on her 1999 promise to support her husband no matter what if he were to run for office, Melania Trump fully stood by her man in the wake of the revelations. Speaking of the incident, Melania told CNN, "...the boys, the way they talk when they grow up and they want to sometimes show each other, oh, this and that, and talking about the girls. But yes, I was surprised, of course." Melania is nothing if not loyal, but dismissing Trump's comments as mere boy talk is arguably to the detriment of allyship to fellow women. Against all odds, Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton to become president of the United States. When Don was inaugurated in 2017, Melania adhered to her 1999 promise to be like Jackie O, channeling the erstwhile Mrs. Kennedy with a Ralph Lauren duck egg blue suit and classy updo. For the first ever first lady for whom English is a second language, Harper's Bazaar argued that the choice of attire was reflective of Melania's commitment to representing and serving a nation that is not natively hers. Despite Melania being first lady, there was another woman constantly by the Donald's side. This was, of course, his daughter Ivanka, who was seemingly present at every major presidential event, despite not being Melania's daughter and regardless of the fact that she was approaching 40 at the time. Well, once a daddy's girl, always a daddy's girl. But Melania was reportedly unhappy with being overshadowed by Ivanka. In her book Melania and Me, the First Lady's pal Stephanie Winston Wolkoff claims that there was a heated rivalry between Melania and Ivanka. In an excerpt published by New York Magazine, Wolkoff writes, "...it was Donald's inauguration, not Ivanka's. But no one was brave enough to tell her that. Melania was not thrilled about Ivanka steering the schedule and would not allow it. Neither was she happy to hear that Ivanka insisted on walking in the Pennsylvania Avenue parade with her children." According to Wolkoff, this led Melania to launch Operation Block Ivanka. In a divergence from her usually refined wardrobe, Melania Trump wore a controversial piece of clothing in 2018. She was photographed donning a green army jacket that read, I really don't care, do you, on the back. 
Many felt this was in poor taste due to the fact that migrant children were concurrently being separated from their parents. The Guardian argued that the jacket decimated the image of Melania as a helpless victim of a powerful man, and that the brutal message revealed her true politics, writing, There was no hidden message. The message was literally spelled out in large letters. This was the moment when the world realized that Melania was not secretly signaling to be saved, but really was Donald's partner and ally. However, Trump was adamant that her jacket was not a reference to incarcerated children. Rather, she told ABC News, I wore the jacket for the left-wing media who were criticizing me, and I want to show them that I don't care. This was also the year she launched Be Best, an anti-bullying initiative. Melania said at a White House ceremony, Be Best has played a major role in spreading awareness, highlighting successful programs, and acts of kindness. Some have argued that the initiative was hypocritical, considering that many of Trump's policies may be seen as antithetical to the well-being of children. During the 2020 presidential election, Melania Trump wore eye-catching ensembles, including a vibrant Gucci dress as she went to cast her ballot. In a campaign filled with invective launched against Don's competitor, Joe Biden, Melania did her best to remain stoic and graceful. But she couldn't quite escape the controversy of Green Jacket Gate, and 2020 would prove to be an even more contentious year for the usually reserved model-turned-floatus. That year, a series of tapes were sent to CNN they were secretly recorded by Stephanie Winston Wolkoff two years earlier, and Melania can be heard expressing some questionable views. Most damning of all, she condones the incarceration of migrant children in detention centers, claiming that the conditions in which the kids are forced to sleep are of decent quality. Melania said on the tapes, the kids, they say, wow, I will have my own bed? I will sleep on the bed? I will have a cabinet for my clothes? It's so sad to hear it, but they didn't have that in their own countries. They sleep on the floor. They are taken care of nicely there. Additionally, she appears to espouse right-wing conspiracy theories that migrant children seeking a better life are coached by their parents to lie about their reasons for escaping their home countries. When Joe Biden was declared president, Melania Trump's time as First Lady subsequently came to an end. But 2021 was not without controversy for Melania. Following the riot on Capitol Hill, she shared her thoughts via the White House website and didn't appear to condemn the attacks. Melania said, I find it shameful that surrounding these tragic events, there has been salacious gossip, unwarranted personal attacks, and false, misleading accusations on me from people who are looking to be relevant and have an agenda. This time is solely about healing our country. Moreover, it seems that all is not well in the Trump abode either. During an appearance with Dawn at the World Series, Melania was seen seemingly scowling at her husband while dressed in a chic tan trench coat. This wasn't the first time she withdrew affection from her spouse. She had previously rejected his attempts to hold her hand on a number of occasions, as chronicled by Indy 100. Additionally, when Donald celebrated his 75th birthday, his wife was noticeably absent from his celebration photos, leading to speculation that she hadn't attended the bash as per People. This has led to rumors that Melania may be considering a divorce from the billionaire ex-POTUS. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.